Gentling Wild Mustangs has been a dream of mine for a long time, so when I got these two girls from Nevada, my goal was to gentle them in a way that I haven't seen done by very many people. I started out gentling them on a four acre pasture to get them comfortable with me so that they had the choice to leave at all times and never felt trapped in my presence. While this took longer because I had to wait for their comfort zone to approach me and be willing to include me in their space, it's been super rewarding. This is now a few months into their training process and I'm working on getting them used to being handled and touched. Mesa the Bay in particular is a lot more sensitive and nervous. I think she's had a little bit more trauma pertaining to people. So she has been coming along slower than Juniper, but she's very, very intelligent and has been trying very hard. What are you guys doing? You being silly? What are you doing? Hi, Gala. They don't even have a guard standing up. You guys must feel really, really safe. Good girls. Notice how Mesa's head's a little more raised than the other two. She's a little bit more hyper vigilant, so I'm just going to stand a little far away and see how close I can get, but I'm going to give them a minute. Yeah, Mesa's going to get up. Says this doesn't feel very safe because she's getting a little too close. Honestly, I'm pretty pleased with how close they're letting me get because laying down for a flight animal is such a vulnerable position. If they don't feel completely safe, they won't do it. And yeah, they're smart because they know it limits their capacity to get away. Venus B, are you being a good girl? Let's see how close Juniper will let me get. Hi, Juni B. Since them being captured and put into captivity is something that would have been done entirely against their will and using lots of force, I wanted to do force-free training with them to give them a nice positive introduction to being around humans so that we could build a partnership that wasn't forced. This was super important to me and while it took longer, it's been such a rewarding experience to watch them start to build more trust with me and allow me to do more and more things with them. And it's also made them a lot more predictable. I haven't found myself in any situations where they've been behaving dangerously or trying to kick me, charge me, bite me, or any type of defensive or quote unquote aggressive behaviors because I haven't put them in a position where they feel trapped and obligated to be around me. Even when I started using the fence panels to work with them separately from my other horse, a two-year-old named Gala who is not a Mustang, I waited until they were comfortable having me near to them so that it wasn't a situation where I was trapping them in a confined area where they had to be around me. And the purpose of using these panels was largely just to be able to work with them without my youngster getting in the way because she's very friendly and outgoing and she would try to take all of my attention if she could. So then when I started working on stuff like hoof handling, I started off really slow, picking up the feet for a very short period of time. But even before I started lifting them, it was just about touching their legs and getting them comfortable with being touched. Juniper came along a lot quicker with the leg handling, whereas Mesa had more trauma related to having her legs touched. So I had to start a lot slower with her to get her comfortable with having her legs touched before ever asking her to pick them up. Something that's important to note is that the way that they trim these horses' legs while they're in captivity at the BLM is to put them in a hydraulic chute where they press on their sides and then it flips them on their side and their hooves are trimmed while they're trapped in the chute. While this is practical and it makes sense for how many horses they have to trim and how they don't really handle or train them at all when they're in the corrals, it is really traumatic for them because it puts them into a situation where they cannot escape and they go into a learned helpless state. Some horses may be more traumatized by this than others and clearly for Mesa it was a very traumatic experience. So I honored how she was showing me her feelings and really took my time handling her because I don't want to make her super uncomfortable.
in the long run going with her comfort zone and not pushing her so far out of it that she gets stressed will pay off because she'll become a more reliable horse who can be depended on and won't be unpredictable whereas if i force her to deal with something and trap her so that she doesn't really have a choice i increase the likelihood of having really anxious responses if she ever does go over threshold because she's not going to have as much trust in the people handling her so taking the time is important the foundation may take longer to build initially but once it's built the payoff is so much greater and you save a lot of grief in situations where horses might be typically stressed and difficult to handle if you take the time to get them comfortable with you first ladies I think the narrative that Mustangs are these wild, dangerous creatures that need to be put in their place in order to not be dangerous is incredibly damaging, and I think the fear of their misbehavior stems from people putting them in situations where they're forcing them way out of their comfort zone and the horse has no choice but to either fight back or have an extreme flight response to try to escape something that they're absolutely terrified of. It stems from people rushing and cutting corners rather than being an innate trait of Mustangs. I think that some of them need way more time than others and if people honored this need for time it would go better like even here you can see juniper ju jumped back because she bumped the plastic bin beside her but she came right back and she settled this is a situation where she was able to calm herself down and regulate very quickly after doing something that startled her and it shows how sensible they are in my opinion we often stereotype these horses and it's not within their best interest and it's unfortunate because it results in people handling them a lot more roughly and without patience. While there's a lot of great trainers who do handle them well and produce these horses really nicely, there's a lot of normalized videos of these horses being extremely reactive and reacting dangerously and having people shrug it off as just a trait of Mustangs when really it's an indicator of how the trainer has rushed the program to the horse's disadvantage. I think that we owe it to horses to be conscious of their fear and be within their comfort zone instead of pushing them way far out of it to the point where they cannot cope or manage. Handling these Mustangs entirely force-free and gentling them in such a large space has been entirely experimental for me, and it's not that I expect everyone to go about it the exact same way that I have, but I hope that in sharing this I might cause people to alter the way that they go about handling horses who are very nervous, whether they're wild Mustangs or horses who just have trauma or are just more sensitive than the average horse. I hope that showing that this works will help people change their perspective on using super forceful methods, because I truly haven't been safer than when I I've started using these rewards-based methods and valuing the horse's comfort zone more. If you don't push a horse way far out of their comfort zone and scare the crap out of them, they really have no reason to react dangerously. Horses aren't typically aggressive or dangerous creatures in the sense that they don't want to cause problems. They want to live in harmony and they want to keep themselves safe. And if you allow them to feel safe, they don't really have a reason to endanger you. So it creates safety for riders and trainers if they start to value the horse's comfort zone and not send them so far over threshold every time that they work with them. Besides, no one understands the reality of their trauma better than the horse who experienced it. While we might not understand why horses react so heavily to certain stimuli, we need to honor the fact that they are very scared and not just assume that they're reacting from a place of being silly or bad. A lot of horses have experienced really stressful circumstances and some are more impacted by them than others. A horse like Mesa is highly sensitive and she's a lot more concerned of what people are doing. But on the flip side, she's super brave to new stimuli and very, very curious of new things. Her fear is very specific to people and she's very cautious around people, which tells me she's had a reason to be that way. And with how traumatic being caught can be for Mustangs, it's not really that surprising. Plus, both of these Mustangs are sales strike Mustangs, which means that they had to go through at least three auctions before being offered for sale rather than adoption. I only have the option of adopting or purchasing sales striked Mustangs because I cannot go through the adoption program unless I leave them in the US for a year to be titled. So the horses that I 
chose are ones that have been in the holding pens for longer and thereby have more of an association with trauma likely because they have been chased around from pen to pen by people within the holding pens and have been around in that stressful environment for a lot longer. And while I'm not faulting the people that work in the pens, there's no way around the fact that being moved from a chute loading system from pen to pen and trailer loaded and moved from corral to corral, having people chase them with flags in order to move them into different areas, that creates an association with people that is not at all pleasant and that's not a criticism on how people do things in these corrals because it might be the most practical way to move these horses when they're unhandled but with that said it doesn't create a very good perspective towards people because they're just used to a human presence meaning move you have to get out of the way myself even through the gloves holy shit the way that I've gone about training these Mustangs is unorthodox for sure, but I've actually really enjoyed it. Because I work with them at Liberty so often, I'm not really reliant on putting a halter and a lead rope on them in order to handle them because they're comfortable enough with me that they'll follow me from place to place and I can do things like handling their feet and trimming them without the halter on. This has also made it more comfortable for a horse like Mesa who feels trapped very easily and would likely have a stronger flight reaction if I were to put her in a position where she tried to pull away, she's attached to me by way of lead rope so for her i'm really taking my time and while she's been haltered and she can lead at liberty and has started learning leading cues it's not within my or her best interest to do that for stuff like hoof handling that she finds difficult so i'm starting slow and allowing her the freedom to leave as needed because it's worked really nicely for her hi girls <laughs> oh thank you that's so nice come on ladies very slowly. Come on. Come on, girls. Good girls. Come on. We're like we're still not sure. Come on, Gala. They walk like they're like a get grooming train. It's to be known that this is a previously wild Mustang. Are you gonna do it? We both know you can. You literally just did. Mesa, come on. Oh my god. You're crazy. You're a crazy girl. You're a wild and crazy mare. You're on the stairs. Why are you on the stairs? Okay. What the heck? Look at this horse. Mesa, you wild child. I don't want you to come all the way in here though. I would prefer not. And I know I'm kind of... There's a very eager follower today. We don't need halters. We just need vibes. Oh, she's trotting after me. <laughs> Mesa, what the hell? You have a whole branch on you. When you decide to bring a whole branch with you. Mesa, did you accessorize? You queen, that's so fashionable. Why'd you bring that with you? This has been a really rewarding and teaching experience for me. It's taught me to be way more meticulous about my shaping steps because if I shape too quickly and scare them, they can just leave and opt not to work with me for the rest of the day. I can't force them to participate. So I've had to really be careful to exist within their threshold and not push them so far out of it that they become afraid and don't want to work with me, which has made me a better trainer as a result. It's tested me in ways that I hadn't really anticipated and it's just been a super cool way to bond with these horses and get used to them and get to know them and help them get used to me as well too. When I eventually start them under saddle, I think we'll have developed a relationship that makes them way more easy to handle and sets the tone for them to be very nice, dependable horses. 
You can check out my Mustang training playlist to watch the videos of my work with them from the very start and also stay tuned as I continue to edit the footage I have and get more of these vlogs up. You can also follow the rest of my pages to see little updates that are going to be posted more frequently and at the correct time because all of these are quite old clips because I'm catching up with all the footage that I have filmed. I'm super excited to continue working with them and eventually start them under saddle. My plan when I start them under saddle is to start them under saddle at Liberty so that they they have full autonomy to leave and it will also make sure that I have to really prepare them well because I won't have the ability to kind of force their participation using equipment. I'm not anti-equipment but I'm doing this to try to hold myself more accountable and really help hone my training skills by making me prepare horses far better than what I might have to if I have the ability to use equipment to kind of stop their reaction. So it's really helps me be more careful about the way that I go about training and I found it to be a really educational experience for myself. So thank you for following my journey. If you're interested in seeing the full tutorials on how I've taught some of these behaviors such as the hoof handling, you can check those out by subscribing to my Patreon channel which is linked below in my YouTube description and stay tuned for more content related to the Mustangs as time progresses. Thank you so much everyone for watching.